Right, so the majority of cards have, have come in. The Dust Till Dawn, right? We have the in spoiler season. I think the only thing left are a few generics, hence why we don't really have access to the card gallery just yet. I do remember Outsiders coming out before the actual boxes released because I did discussion on the different segments of cards. I want to do that again for Dust Till Dawn. So hopefully we see it after this pre-release weekend and I can, you know, sit down and talk about the light cards, shadow cards, and then the um, base hero cards slash generics. But we also did get the collector page for Dust Till Dawn. And first pointed out for me, at least by Riddler Man, is some very important bits of information. There are actually a few different things that I do want to go over here on the collector page, but the, the biggest thing, right, out of prints. Well, actually, see, for me, the biggest thing is this, April 2023, right? So again, out of print in April 2023 or from April 2023, right? That's, that's the line of thought to have. What does this mean for the serialized art cards? Okay. Again, a, a big thing I always want to be is objective. The Dust Till Dawn article, right, revealing the set came out May 1st. In this article, the serialized art cards were emphasized to only be in the Belgium printing of the product. It wasn't till the mid to end of May, right, 23rd, that we got the update regarding the serialized art cards and their placement into the Japanese printing. Now it's still the same volume of cards, 10 copies of each, right? So hopefully what this means is that Legend Story Studios went through the painstaking trouble to, you know, correct their first idea and have these cards inserted into the Japanese printing. But it is, it is a bit curious to me, right? Because again, I want to be objective. And in all seriousness, it is something we, we should probably discuss. Was their intention straight away to have it in both printings? Because again, if we look at the dates, right? So Dust Till Dawn is started to be printed in April, early April to end of April. If you say end of April, it makes a bit more sense, right? So we have printing from April all the way to May when the article is released, and then they come up with the idea, well, we're going to insert them into both boxes. So they correct the Japanese printing. So rather than being date printed April, it's really date printed May, right? So the majority of it was printed, sorted, and packaged in May. That is what works for the article. Now, I can also see the article not coming out until they've done quality control and they've had the, the cards inserted into the boxes, okay? So this correction could happen anywhere between the 1st and the 23rd. But again, to be objective, this is not something you would ever see a, a big company really try to do, right? To have a set printed in April to early May, again, slight benefit of the doubt, and then go through what it would take to correct this, right? To have these 20 serialized art cards split between the two different printing. Again, if they were all printed at Belgium, right? That was the general idea. That was the rationale for why they were included in the Belgium boxes. Then in this time frame, they have split them up, taken a few, gone to the Japanese printing and gave them to them, or to some degree, told the Belgium printing to ax X cards and have the Japanese printing prints X cards. All of these scenarios are a lot of work, right? So given Legend Story Studios track record, I, I do fully believe that they went through hell, right? To get this to function, given their initial premise, what they released when they first talked about the set uh, to this point now, May 23rd, where we have it in both printings, right? They went, they moved heaven and earth essentially to correct their, their choice in printing. Right? I'm more than happy to say that. But you still also need to look at it at the other angle. Right, There is a lot of planning and preparation that goes into something like this. So to have the print date revealed as April, the articles revealed as May, and then the correction revealed three weeks later, there is some thought there that, you know, when, when the set was first announced, maybe, that they had thought about it and they were thinking about it and they were on the fence and they were planning for it to be in both sets, right? And they just had to stick with it until they were absolutely sure it had worked. So that was the case for the initial version of the article. But nonetheless, it is still something potentially worth scrutinizing and 
you know, it will all come down to what actually gets pulled and where. But anyway, that aside, no more negative Nancy, if you will. Let's let's talk about some more interesting things. All right. So starting off, we have the legendary pull rate. One in sixty-four packs. Right, not one in X, then dot dot, one in blah blah blah. We don't have the distinction between the cold foils and the and the rainbow foils, which is interesting to me. Right? So on Dynasty, the other supplemental set, quote unquote. I don't like calling Dustal Dawn a supplemental set anymore, because it's it's not really a supplemental set. It is a small set, but it is not a, a supplemental set, because to me, supplemental has to expand all areas of play. And this just is an enabler for the new prism and Visette more so than anything, right? It has, sure, some cards to uh, expand upon constructed formats, but it does primarily feature these four heroes. So yeah, so eight legendaries, one in 64. Well, if we did the math, for instance, off of the dynasty pull rates, right? So one in 88 versus one in 280. Well, if you were to add them all up, okay? So uh, it's like 3.18 if you were to divide 280 by 88 and stick them together. So 4.18 divided by 280, right? So that's how many rainbow foils slash cold foils you would find in 280 packs. Well, you get the pull rate per legendary of 66. So this, this does work as a ratio of the two. I would not be upset though, if this was the ratio of rainbow foils and they're keeping the cold foil legendaries a little bit secret. Again, I, I would heavily emphasize that I, I would want Rainbow Foil Legendaries easier to pull and Cold Foil Legendaries significantly harder to pull, right? Having a Legendary one or two boxes is completely fine with me on the Rainbow Foil side, because again, they are so critical to play that, again, we I want a stronger incentive to open smaller quantities of boxes, even if they become, you know, $20 cards all around. On the Rainbow Foil side, that's that's all point. They're meant to be the accessible version. Then we also have Majestics, one in four. That's the same, right? So one in four. Rares, one in 7.5 versus one in 6.8. Obviously, the down tick, right, is because of the uh, well, Marvels, Cold Foils, and now the Serialized Archons. So interestingly, right, if you were somewhat insane, you could do the math and you could work out the pull rates right, from, from these, if you were to, you know, evaluate the Marvels off of previous sets, the Fabled off of previous sets, you could work out the, the breakdown, right, the change in the rares by these, these 10 cards. And you could use that to then calculate the print size. So actually that's, that's a challenge for anyone watching, right? You got the ratios here. I know these are blank, but there are, there are relatively good values that that people have found granted they're not the the publicly stated values but they are still decent values that people have found from mass testing so if you were to factor in those those values you could again estimate the pull rates for the serialized sketch cards bit of holiday work if you want <laughs> right it's fourth it's july right so fourth of july was this week in america okay so what have we got We've gone over the, no, we haven't actually touched on the art print. I went straight to the, the date printed. <laughs> okay, so it being out of print, is this a, a big deal? To some degree, yeah, right. But there are two sides of the coin you could fall on, right? One side is that the set is, is normally printed, if you will, okay? So because it won't have second waves or restocks or anything like that, it is a smaller printing. I think the more rational thought to have is that to compensate for it being out of print all at once, it is it is largely printed, right? It's going to be a, a proper estimate for what they think is the current level of uh, Fab 2.0 boxes, if you will, right? So the total population that uh, Uprising Outsiders and Dynasty will end up with, they've estimated and they've printed that amount of Dust Till Dawn boxes straight away. A large printing volume also again, ties back into the date printed, right? This being a from rather than it all being in April. Okay, so April to May, they have continued to print and we have ended up with a larger volume in total of boxes from the get-go. So off of that, right, there is the thought that, well, since it is out of print straight away, that Dust Till Dawn will be heavily demanded upon, that we might see some price gouging again, some price rises, 
and overall a better collectible value for the boxes in themselves because this is essentially equivalent to a a first edition box right because it's it's that similar model where by the time they come out they are out of print but i i am one of the people on the other side right i do think that they will they will adjust the numbers to compensate and dust or dawn will be massively printed from the get-go well i shouldn't say massively but you know, larger than the first wave printings of, of all the other Fab 2.0 sets. In terms of holding on to sealed, I, I don't, I don't know if the value's there, right? I, I, it's, it's sort of like the one rank, right? If all 20 cards get pulled, then the biggest chase of the box is gone. Yes, you still have the Marvels. Yes, you still have the Cold Falls and Legendaries. Again, their collectability is dictated by playability, right? Even the Fabled in itself. Take the, the Blood of Drakkar versus any other Fable, right? Because it is not not overly playable, slash playable only in, you know, two classes. And even in those two classes, you don't generally auto-include it. Uh, it's, it's significantly devalued, right? So these are the big collector chase cards because, again, play doesn't factor in for them. So in that regard, right? Yes, there, there could be some incentive to sit on your boxes, to hold them. But do just prepare that if the print numbers come out, right, Dust or Dawn could be overprinted compared to the other sets, all to accommodate or to plan for the expected demand. Right, and then the other thing to sort of go through, not the card gallery, obviously. Hopefully it comes out soon so I can do the other videos. But we, we have some short prints. Okay, so the hero cards are short printed. They're similar to Dynasty. We can use this to evaluate uh, like Arachne, right? So Yoju is 66% less versus Arachne. Can I control F? Arachne was not short printed. Hmm. All right, that's even more interesting to me. And he had Rainbow Fall versions. Because I know the Rainbow Fall versions add, well, they don't hold substantial value, but they do hold some degree of value, right? Uh, $5 for the Rainbow Fall version. Okay, but with Prism and Visette short printed, right? Something to consider is, well, these are the only versions outside of, again, the promo cards for people to have access to these heroes for Classic Constructed and, and Blitz. For them being short printed is interesting because it, it might bring some value to these cards. Now, going solely off of, off of this list, Right, they're not cited to have Rainbow Fall versions. I would absolutely assume that they do have Rainbow Fall versions, and you know, we still have some cards excluded from this list, or some versions excluded from this list, because a you know, they like to have their secrecy. Normally, Light of Soul, the, the fable isn't auto-included. Right, it didn't come out as a spoiler, it got leaked, I believe, which so they've just you know decided to include it in the list since everyone is talking about it anyway. But we do still have those generics, right? So there is still a few slots. I believe one is a legendary. So curious what that would be. But then we also have uh, some equipment, right? Short printed. Because again, this, this set has more Majestics overall, which I, I kind of would have liked them to go the other way, increase the pull rates for Majestics. Again, this being a supplemental set, quote unquote, it's not draftable. So the whole incentive to open is to find the high-end cards so supplying the market with a bunch of majestics you know isn't a bad thing because again majestics i think are the one set of cards that are priced perfectly okay they they are value valuable right on the really playable cards which they should be but the majority are cheap and easy to collect and use to build your deck so i have no issue with majestics the equipments right the cold foil being short printed better than the base version right so I, I would be completely fine if the cold foil was significantly less rare but then the regular was normal there are also a few other cards right oblivion that's an interesting one i think i will quickly look up some of these cards because i know as so equipment the the mentality for is you only need one right oblivion is not an equipment card so unless it has the legendary tag you might need more than one so it being short printed is interesting and it's a legendary so it makes complete sense <laughs> right so that's fine that's why it's short printed you'll need one copy versus all the other majestics so again the the rationale and the thorn is there which is great to see we also have extended arts of widespread annihilation destruction and ruin 
What cards are they? Are they Majestics? Are they... They are Majestics. Good. I like Extended Art Majestics more so than just Rare Cards. Speaking of which, we do have the Heralds. Right, so the Heralds... Uh, where are you? You're near the top because you're in Prisms. Here we are. So they just have regular Extended Art. They don't have Foil Extended Art, just regular Extended Art. Okay, so I will probably assume that these are, you know, common. They are Rare Cards. All of them, right? They didn't touch the Majestics and they didn't touch the, the Commons. The Ravengers was... Not Ravengers. Was it Ravengers? The one that... No. No, I'm pretty sure some of these are Commons. Like the Watcher and Herald is common, isn't it? Either way, they've reprinted them because they're a necessity for Prism. Was this necessary? No. All right? There's more than enough Monarch to go around that this wasn't necessary. A non-foil extended art kind of feels bad to be honest. And I think it would have served them better to be, you know, chase cards, chase variants of the Heralds for Prism decks, just having them as sort of a, a necessity because we are getting a reprint of Prism and we are seeing that Heralds play an important role based on the weapon and everything. But by and large to me, they kind of just feel like pack filler. Whether or not they are valued higher or lower than the other versions, right? I I'd sort of assume they'd slot between. So it'd go like first edition Rainbow Foil, uh, maybe extended art, then unlimited rainbow foil, and then all the just normal versions, right? They definitely have to slot above the normal versions, despite Monarch being older. Either way, it, it does still seem like there is a decent amount of just bulk, right, in the in the set. Again, I would love to see this number of rares cut down, right? Make it one to less, even cut down the commons. A supplemental set doesn't have to be 10, right? There's no point to draft it. I would be completely fine in, you know, having less of a job of sorting, maybe even getting a slight discount on the supplemental sets because there are less cards that make them up or just having a, a larger, larger pack count. Now there are always some great commons and rares, right? That are needed, but there are still going to be always and forever with any set that comes out because it's, it's just, you know, something that has to happen, bulk cards. And in a supplemental set, again, that isn't draftable, you know, if we could do away with them, sort of head towards the Yu-Gi-Oh territory of their, their collector rare sets, whatever you want to call it. I think like, or they legendary duelist, or I feel like they're called collector rare or something like that. I know that's a rarity, but anyway, just going down that, that line of thought where we cut out the bulk from these sets, I'd be completely fine with it. Anyway, we'll, we'll leave it there. Those were the big talking points, the out of print and the date printed again. Given their track record, I'm more than happy to, to say that they went through hell on earth to get these cards into both printings. It's still worth a thought. Anyway, hope you enjoyed. See ya.